Good morning, my friends from all over the world. Today we have an extraordinary human being um, in our show, hemp engineering uh, show. Her name is Melissa Elisa Smith. She's running as a, in the Senate for the state of Victoria in Australia. Welcome, Elisa. Thank you, Ramon. I'm so happy to be here and being interviewed by you. I love your videos. Well, the pleasure is mine because uh, after talking to you, I find that level of passion and that level of knowledge for what's happening in the in the cannabis business that motivates me even more to keep doing what I'm doing for the service of our plant. Elisa, <clears throat> tell us about yourself. How did you learn about cannabis? How did you end up in the, in the cannabis as a whole? Well, my, my career basically has been in the aquatic industry. So um, I have been, I have a, my own medical reasons for taking cannabis. I have a neurological condition. And so I was introduced to cannabis when I was about 18. I met some friends here and they gave me a little bit to try and I was open to trying it and discovered that it actually had a really positive effect on my neurological condition. And then over the years, I've had more opportunities to try and use different products and in 2017 was able to actually access it medically for my own medical condition um, and now have the opportunity to use medical cannabis but, but my belief system is all that cannabis that I used over those years helped my body so all cannabis is medicine but we do need regulation to make sure that those that need the best quality are getting the best quality. So um, I've studied and researched and found out for different reasons. We have a family history of breast cancer. So I've had to in, learn about how cannabis treatments can benefit um, patients with breast cancer. So for me, it's been a 30 year journey of using cannabis and discovering its different properties and qualities and uses and ways of using it. I love to cook with it. So I guess, I guess that during those 30 years, you have had experience with the prohibition itself? Yes. Um, from my experience, it's it, the biggest prohibition other than the stigma of criminalization for looking after your health which to me is mental, um, the, the biggest prohibition that I've had to face is the cost and access to medical cannabis. Um, what I pay for a medical script is three times what I would pay for it at a street market value. Um, the con quality is consistent and that's what you expect when you're paying that amount of money. So in, in saying that there are lots of companies that are out there producing now, it's just not getting onto the market effectively because it's so cost prohibitive. I mean, literally there's been times where you've had to consider whether you're gonna be buying food one week or go to the food bank so that you can get medication to stop the neurological condition that's genetic that I was born with. So it, it is very frustrating. Then to be attached with the stigma of being not able to drive. So while trying to improve my quality of life to live the same as everybody else, I'm not allowed to drive using the medicine that would keep me able to drive. So it's a bit of a catch 22 and those laws are not written for the patients. They're written for the people who are making money off them because the reality is the amount of car accidents that are caused by people who aren't on anything is much greater than those that are on things. And once those statistics are out in the public and seen, it will be just natural choice. And I'm hoping that our voters can recognise we're right at the cusp of that at the moment. We've had so many people, I think it was something like 30 odd thousand people in last year alone were went through the court system just for drug possession charges or drug related charges. Now, all of those people aren't all dealers, they aren't all criminals, 
they are just using a plant for whatever medicational need they have. And B, if they're self-medicating for anxiety or stress or depression, it's because we don't have enough doctors or psychologists to be able to get there. Even our vets can't even get to psychologists. There's not enough. So investment into mental health and changing the driving laws and changing the access schemes are all the bills that I'll be looking at pushing if I get to the Senate. I must confess to you that you are so shiny, shiny smart. And the way that you express what your passion truly impressed me and resonated in my soul. Elisa, because it, it is true that, um, that the, our legal system is wrong compared uh, on respect to cannabis, the law must be changed because we cannot be ruled by ignorance anymore. Our decision makers or our judges need to catch up and learn more about this because we cannot keep ruling <clears throat> the current times with medieval mentality. Definitely. We are like in the, when the Spaniards arrived in, in the Americas with the idea of the Inquisition, they saw the woman as, as all, they were all witches and they, a lot of them ended up being burned just because one guy believed that the, what their, her, their knowledge was a threat to humanity. And that is absolutely wrong. Everything that we know about him is wrong, is purely darkness. Having said that, in the, in the 1990s, we have already discovered that our, that their, our nervous system is controlled by our endocannabinoid system, which rule every aspect of our mind and our bodies. And unbelievably speaking, it still is not taught in the universities. So this is something that I, as an engineer, it is absolutely disgraceful, not just in Australia, but worldwide. Our doctors have to be trained to understand the effect of cannabis because therefore we're having mutilated doctors. And that is like teaching a military to become a soldier without a gun. This is absolutely horrendous. Elisa, I am motivated to ask you, if you were elected, what are your plans? What are you, what are you planning to do once you are in? Well, domination. <laughs> no. Um, as a political party, we don't have enough weight in the Senate to take over the country. And anybody who thinks that cannabis is going to take over the country are living under a belief system that's absolutely delusional because we physically can't take over the country. But what I intend on doing <clears throat> is creating bills that change the laws so that our judges don't have to go home to their beds at night knowing they put away a person that was innocent for taking just a plant to medically um, heal themselves. I'm, t I'm looking at changing laws so that our police systems can't indiscriminately just with their determination choose to strip down someone because they think that they're having extra cannabis on them because they're smoking a joint in a public place. And that's the aim, to be able to bring in bills that makes the other members of parliament look at their conscience, look at their belief systems, look at the laws and how they're harming and find strategies to minimise those harms and increase the economy. I've worked in the aquatic industry for 30 years. The aquatic industry has been in existence in this country as an industry for 40 years. So for me, I've been on a daily basis for the last 30 years teaching parents, families, children, adults, all schools, all different levels, how to survive in an environment that will kill them in three minutes if they don't know how to use it. And I've had to encourage the entire industry to embrace synchronised swimming skills as an extension of the basic skills that we give to people because of the buoyancy properties, the resilience properties, the life-saving properties that our skill base knows. Now, 
of our population in Australia, less than 0.1% understands the principles of movement in synchronized swimming. But does that make us crazy? Yeah. No, it makes us skilled experts in an environment where you don't know how dangerous it is for you, but we can teach you. And you can learn to have the same level of enjoyment in it that we have. And it's humanly possible for everybody to learn those skills. But where did the funding come for that knowledge? It came because we have to create industry that makes money. People's lives aren't money makers. So, you know, we get replaced with more people. So the idea at the moment for me towards the people who are decision makers and, and the voters is use your voice now to make a change for the people who are affected by this. Jobs are affected. We could be having a much better economy if we increase the level of jobs in this industry. There's not one country that has legalised that has had an economic slump. Well, um, Elisa, um, allow me to reinforce your uh, thinking. I I only disagree with the fact that uh, that Australia is ready to take over the political system. It is not just about uh, supporting the medical aspect of cannabis. Everything that we do, everything that we can build with, everything that we can manufacture can be, can be used from cannabis as well. Yep. Therefore, there is a huge potential to that according to my calculations, something that I can share with you, we can create a half a trillion dollars economy just by substituting the current products that we do with whatever using hemp, which is the sister or of the uh, marijuana or cannabis, I, as we like to call it in Australia. Yeah. And therefore, um, yes, there is a huge potential there. And I don't, like I say, I disagree with you with the fact that we are not ready to take over the status quo. Yes, we can. It is up to those such as yourself who, who's running for political seats that can bring this message. And, and look, I, I'm telling you this because just a few months ago, the United States government just passed the Green Bill. The Green Bill is $2 trillion. $2 trillion investment that half of it will be done for hemp. France, the, where uh, the very in short, in a few times, in a few years, will be uh, uh, um, hosting the uh, Olympics. They have uh, passed a bill where half of the investments, government investments in infrastructure have to be built from hemp. So it, it is, it is the, proper path of what the evol uh, evolution of humanity is going. And we in Australia have the right, we have the potential to make this happen very quick because this is a, in population terms, it's a very small country. It's a very large country with very few people that can be, that this economy can be turned around very easily. And the most beautiful part of cannabis is, uh, is regional. It is, we can build everything from him. We can, and, and moreover, just to compliment before I, because I start talking and then I will not let you talk. <laughs> My recommendation to, to the, our, our cannabis party, legalized cannabis party, is that we lead by example. Therefore, our candidates should be wearing hemp cloth every single day. Oh, yes. They, they have to, because is there any other way? And finally, and not last, my friend, if not now, when? If it's not us, who else? So this is it. This is our current present, and we have to give it all because humanity needs us. I guess this brings us to my next 
And last question, what would you tell the, deci the decision makers in Australia? That they're missing an economic opportunity. They're, they're actually shooting themselves in the eco economical foot by not legalizing it. By legalizing across the board gives us competition. It's a commercial market. They need to have competition. They need to not be um, little pockets that have got their own hold on things. The better the competition, the better it is for the economy and the better it is for the um, consumers. And the decision makers at the moment, right at this time, are the voters because the government doesn't have power at the moment. They're sitting there waiting to see what happens. So the decision makers at this point in time is every cannabis user or anyone who agrees with the policies that we're putting forward to make a stand and vote one cannabis at their election in the Senate. And we're not telling anybody how to do their preferences. That's their choice. We're a small minor party at the moment, so we're not in a position of negotiating preferences with anyone. And because we're all about freedom of choice and all our decision makers have the right to choose who they want to have run for them, but if they vote for one cannabis and we get enough seats in every one of the states, we will be able to have a voice to make those changes to law that will improve the economy, will improve the health of the country and will improve our standing internationally because at the moment we look like we're hicks. My lady, uh, I'm a son of Australia. I was, uh, I acquired the citizenship um, over a decade ago. But I do have an international experience that I can share with you and our audience. One person can make a difference. I, I seen it, I lived it. One person stand up in a public place and start calling people to vote makes a difference. And I've seen one person more than once in different countries that had defeated the status quo and won the presidency and defeated the, the politicians. So yes, it's possible. Yes, keep studying, yes, keep working, but above all, let's keep the faith up because this is, cannabis is the solution for our social, technological, economical, and political challenges of our time. I just love the concept of, biofuels, metals, plastics, hempcrete, all of the, the actual applications that this product can be used in, it's mind blowing. It's, it's so exciting. Therefore, Thank you, Ramon. Therefore, it is possible, it is up to us, and together we stand divided with all. Elisa, Definitely. what a great pleasure having you in this show, this platform is your open house. I am here to help and I am sure with that passion, your voice, your beauty, your experience, everything that you have lived uh, to be right in this moment will assure you the success that not just you, but Australia needs. Thank you very much. Thank you for all the beautiful warriors out there that have fought before me and got me to this place. And it's a team effort and it couldn't, it, 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 yes, one person with a group can make a big change and Ramon, you're doing it as well. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you.